Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm going to be talking about the tools that I use most and why because I think why is important and that helps explain the process and that sort of thing. But first, I want to ask you if you're interested in getting tips and tricks emailed to you. I have a newsletter via my website. You can subscribe to that below uh, where I share tips and tricks every week for Luminar Neo and other apps. I've also got an ebook coming really soon for all my newsletter subscribers that's free that's uh, all about tips and tricks in Luminar Neo plus I've got free Luminar presets things like that so if you want to check that out check the link down below and if not that's okay I'll just be over here in the corner crying uh, anyway I'm kidding so let's get into this edit because these tools are awesome and I love them so I've got a photo here and you can see it's got a lot of things that needs to, uh, that need to be fixed, and we're going to do that. Now, the first tool that I use all the time, and frankly, I always start with it, is Develop Raw. And I also like to hit the J key just to turn on kind of the blinkies, the blue and the red, to show me if I've got any issues with uh, blown highlights or really crushed shadows. In this case, I want to uh, basically lift some of these shadows. And I want to pull down the highlights and take a look at the whites. Uh, you know, maybe something about like that. I'm going to warm it up a tiny bit to give it a tiny bit more tint and a tiny bit of vibrance. I don't do a lot of color work in Develop Raw simply because that's global. And I do some temperature work, but I do very little, uh, basically zero saturation, sometimes a little bit of vibrance. But I simply think that there are other ways that you can do that uh, better with other tools. I also like to come in and click on the uh, distortion correction on raw files and I like to go into transform as well and in this case I'm going to go slightly left with the verticals and as you'll see this is going to kind of straighten up that castle this was in Conway Wales by the way so let me show you what I've done with develop raw there it is before and there it is now I think that looks really good to be honest I'm gonna hit the J key I don't have any issues with blown highlights or anything like that so I think I'm all good I'm gonna go ahead and close that now there are two other tools that I use all the time that aren't really editing tools they're fixing tools and that's crop and erase I'm gonna use them both on this photo and I use them all the time but I'm not making really them a part of this video so let me go ahead and do that and then we'll jump into the next tool that I want to talk about Okay, I've cropped and erased. Again, very important tools, but they're kind of like fix-it tools, so to speak. So I'm just kind of skipping that. Uh, the second tool I want to talk about is Super Contrast. As the name implies, it's, uh, it's incredible at helping you adjust contrast. And it frankly just makes my life better uh, in terms of using this on uh, various photos. And frankly, I use it on just about every photo simply because I just think it just works wonders on an image and I just love the results that I get so I'm gonna do something about like that let me show you the before and the after it's great it really is giving a nice little pop to the light that's why I use it so much now the third tool that I want to talk about is structure AI I use it all the time but I tend to do it a couple of different ways and you've seen this if you've been to, uh, here on my channel before and seen previous videos I'll often take structure positively and then like let's say in this case I use a linear gradient and I'll just kind of smack that across that foreground kind of blend it into that area and all I'm doing is kind of popping that foreground adding a little bit of crunch there it is before and after I like that I'm gonna close the tool I'm gonna open that tool again and this time I want to go slightly negative and I'm gonna use mask AI to just put this smoothing into the sky so there it is it's found the sky and with basically a couple of clicks I've got essentially a perfect mask and I'm not gonna have to smooth this out I like to smooth things out quite a bit in skies and water but this is a little bit of a long exposure so the water is pretty clear and also because it's a long exposure those clouds are nice and streaky I don't want to overdo it because if I go like that you can see it gets really blurry I just add a tiny bit of smoothing like a 10 or 15 just to kind of accentuate what's already there but Structure AI is super important to me and I part of my workflow because I can add that crunch or I can smooth things out, which is something I like to do. Um, you'll notice I started with Develop Raw and then I went to Super Contrast and that's because the first thing I do when I'm editing is think about the light. Those two tools really help me get the light in good shape. And I think that helped me really balance the light. The second thing I think about when I'm editing is detail. And I use Structure AI here to really enhance the detail in that foreground area. 
and remove detail from the sky, which didn't really need a lot, but I do that a lot on various photos. Now, the third thing that I think about is color. And that leads me to my next tool, which is toning. And what I wanna do is here in the highlights, just give it a little bit of a bump in saturation, maybe about a 20. And I'm in the hue, which is all the way to the left here. So that's really the red. And all I'm doing is taking that highlight colors that are kind of warm and making them a little bit warmer. I love toning, I use it all the time. And by the way, if there are specific tools that I'm talking about in this video, and you really want me to dive into those in a little bit deeper way, some of which I've probably done in previous videos, but if there's things that you really want me to jump into in a little bit more depth, leave a comment down below and let me know. The next color tool that I really like to use is Color Harmony, and that's simply because as the name implies, it just really does help kind of harmonize the colors. It gives you a lot of power and control. And while this will not be a deep dive, I am going to cover two aspects of this pretty quickly. And that is the brilliance and warmth. I want to use that. And here I'm going to go a little bit more brilliant. So that pumps up the kind of intensity of the color across the photo. And the warmth overall, I'm actually going to go a slight bit left. And this is slightly opposite of what I did with the temperature slider in Develop but that happens a lot when I'm editing. I kind of change my mind, I move things around, and you know what, that's okay. I'm just looking for a final result that I like, and in this case, I, I do end up with one. I'm also gonna take the warmth and the uh, cool here in split color warmth, and dragging this to the right is gonna take the warm colors, make them a little bit warmer, and dragging cool to the left is gonna make the cool colors a little bit cooler. So really what I'm doing here, and I do this a lot, and I think I mentioned this a lot, is I'm playing off the warm and the cool colors because kind of the warm colors and the cool colors, the, the warmth being kind of the yellow, orange, red, if you will, and the cool colors being, of course, kind of the bluish kind of colors, they're complementary, and so I'm trying to play off those, and I do that a lot in sunset photo edits. So if you look at the before, there it is, and the after, there it is now, much more intense color, but I don't think oversaturated, but I think I've got a lot of that nice, cool, and warm kind of interplay going because of what I was able to do here in Color Harmony. Now the next tool is also a color tool and it's called Color, of course. And what I rarely do is uh, saturation here. Sometimes I do a little bit of vibrance, but what I, what I really like to do is come into HSL. And I'm gonna start with H, which is Hue. And I talked about using HSL in that recent video. It's incredibly powerful, it gives you a lot of control over color, and that's why I use it so much. I'm gonna start in hue, and all I wanna do is take the yellows and oranges and make them a little bit more intense. So I'm gonna start with orange, or excuse me, yellow, and I wanna go pretty low there, which is really making the yellows more orange. And then I'm also gonna take the orange and make them a little bit more red. And shifting these hues, I think, just give you uh, a nice bit of control over the color, and it kind of enriches the overall look of that sunset. So I like that quite a bit. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna go into luminance and I'm gonna take the luminance of the yellow down a bit. So maybe something about like that. I'm kind of darkening that yellow, uh, which and, and I've made it a little bit more orange. So I'm kind of removing some of that yellow kind of look and making it a bit more orange, which I think complements what's kind of going on with these clouds and the clouds over there. I just like that look overall. Every photo is gonna be different, of course, but don't hesitate to use HSL, especially the H and the L parts here in the color tool to really update, kind of enhance and, and shift really the look of the colors in your photo. There it is before, especially on that right hand side, you can see it was really yellow overall. And now it's a lot more subtle, kind of orangey, kind of pink. And I think that blends into this photo in a really nice way. Two more tools to talk about here real quick. The next one is Accent AI. And this one I use sparingly, and I've talked about this before, and I also use it fairly late in my edit simply because it does a lot to a photo, and I will either use it gently, like I'm using here, which is a 20 overall, or I will use it gently, maybe a 20 or so, and then mask it in. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just use it across the entire photo, but don't hesitate to use Accent AI, just masked into certain areas to make them pop. But again, because it does so much around color and contrast and, all, and of course light, I tend to use it late in my edits. I just think it's better that way because otherwise it can kind of overwhelm a photo. But for a finishing touch, it does a great job of just kind of popping this image. So there it is before Accent AI, and there it is now. Nice little bit of color and contrast pop, which I like quite a bit. 
And the last tool is vignette. I use this tool all the time, and I like to go a little bit with the amount and the size. I kind of like roundness and high feathering, and I like a little bit of inner light, and I pretty much always choose a subject, which for me is going to be over here, kind of around that castle. And so I've got that in place. I've messed around with these sliders a little bit. I use feathering at 100 pretty much all the time, simply because I want a smooth transition. I don't want like a hard, visible vignette most of the time. But if you look at the before and the after, that inner light, as the name implies, it really pops this subject for you when you place it on the subject. So choosing subject, super important. I think inner light, super useful and important. And then I tend to go a little bit rounder and high feathering, but overall the vignette gives a nice little pop to the image. There it is before, and there it is after. And this is my overall edit. There it is before. Pretty dark. Obviously it needed some fixes like spot removal and, and light adjustments, but I was able to pop the color, the light, put the detail in the right places, and overall get a much better looking photo. Just using some frankly simple tools and i think you just get massive amounts of control these are the tools that i use the most and to be clear i shoot cityscapes and landscapes so i didn't cover any portrait tools they're great i just don't do a lot of portraits but if you want to see some portrait edits which i do do simply because i like to keep my skills kind of fluent in luminar let me know down below but for cityscapes and landscapes i think you can't beat these tools and it doesn't mean they're the only tools to use. There's plenty of other great tools that you can use. Atmosphere AI, I love Mystical. If you want to replace a sky, you've got all these other powerful things. But these are the tools that I use the most on the photos that I take most often. That's the way it went in this one, my friends. One more time if you want to see before and after. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with a new video. You guys take care. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, adios.